I send over 45,000 emails through High Level every single month. And today I'm going to show you the four different ways you can set up your email sending domains and what the pros and cons of each are. After watching this video, you'll understand the technical side of how to set this stuff up to actually get delivered. And at the end, I'll show you how to make sure you're actually landing in the inbox and not the promotions. Also, I'll show you the number one reason I see people in my community of almost 600 people using high level showing up in spam consistently and how to prevent that. It's a super simple fix, so there's no reason you should be landing in spam. For each method, I'm going to cover exactly how to set it up. So click by click setting it up from scratch so you can do it yourself. I'll cover the pros and cons of this method. And then third, I'll cover what type of business using high level should use each method. So a SaaS company should probably use a very different method than a $3,000 per month marketing agency, right? And I'll show you the method that I use to support my 200 active SaaS customers and also the method that I use for my own business, Review Harvest, to make sure that our marketing emails get delivered and seen. If you don't know who I am, my name is Clay Lawrence, owner of ReviewHarvest.com. I make about $24,000 per month just helping local business owners get Google reviews using High Level to do everything. And this channel is all about showing other people how they can use High Level to start making some semi-passive income and hopefully change your life. So let's dive into the first method. The first method is set up by default in your account. So the pro is that there's nothing you have to do to set it up. The con is that you're sharing the deliverability and the reputation of everyone else using High Level. So this is the mg.messenger.net. This is just going to come out of the box when you sign up with High Level if you start sending emails. And really, nobody should be using this. You're not going to get great deliverability. It doesn't look professional for you or for your clients. And when somebody signs up to High Level and they start spamming out hundreds of thousands of emails, that's going to affect the deliverability of your own email because you're sharing the reputation of all the other High Level users using this sending domain. So once again, the one pro is that it's easy to set up because there's nothing you have to do. But in terms of who should be using this, really nobody. Some of the methods that I'm going to show you take less than 10 minutes to set up and are going to give you exponentially better results. So let's dive into the second method, which is setting up a software-wide sending domain. So you can set this up once, and then anytime you get a new client or you create a new sub-account, that's the domain that that sub-account is going to send emails from. So if you want to set this up, you want to go to your agency view, you go to settings, you go to email services right here, and then if you haven't added one yet, this is not going to pop up, and it's going to say create a dedicated domain. And so you just click on dedicated domain right here or click on that pop up. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a domain. All right. And so after you click on add domain, it's going to prompt you to put your domain in here. And then we're going to add these DNS records into your DNS registrar. So for this video, I'm going to use this branchbid.com. I purchased this domain in GoDaddy and we're going to go to the DNS settings in GoDaddy right here. And we'll be able to add these records manually or depending on where you purchased your domain from like Namecheap, GoDaddy, Cloudflare, sometimes High Level will be able to automatically add these DNS records for you. So if you purchase it from GoDaddy and Cloudflare, I'm pretty sure it'll automatically add these DNS records, but I'll also show you how to add them manually so that if your DNS registrar is not supported, you can add them pretty easily. And so one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put your root domain here in the domain name. You don't want to have reviewharvest.com or branchbid.com as the default sending domain for all your clients. Because let's say somebody gets a hold of your software and they send out 100,000 emails and many of them are marked as spam because they're all going to cold people that have no idea who you are then that can affect your main website, your main domain. You can get blacklisted, so you don't want to do that. You want to set this up on a subdomain, meaning something in front of your root domain, so that it doesn't necessarily affect that reputation as much. So one thing you can do is you can just add the first letter, so a b.branchbid.com. This kind of blends in. It doesn't really look different. This is something that a lot of people do. It kind of blends into that first letter, so you can barely even tell. Another thing you could do is you could add, say, email.branchbid.com. Once again, we're just doing this to protect your root domain so that if people are marketing as spam, you don't get blacklisted. Because if your root domain gets messed up with a bunch of spam complaints, that can mess up your website and a bunch of other things. And so once you decide the subdomain you want to use, whether it's email or the first letter, you want to click on add and verify. And then you have an option to add these records manually or you can click on continue. And depending on where you purchase that domain, it might automatically add these DNS records for you. So you can see I purchased this on GoDaddy, so it's going to click on Authorize Domain. It's going to take me to GoDaddy and say, do you want Lead Connector to make these changes? Lead Connector is just the gray labeled version of High Level. And so you can click on Connect, and now it's going to automatically add all those DNS records to GoDaddy. But I'm also going to show you how to do this manually. So you can see when it first loads in here, they're probably not all going to be verified right away. It's kind of finicky. You have to play around with it. Normally you have to wait 5 to 10 minutes to make sure they're all verified. 
but I'll go ahead and show you how to add all these manually just in case your DNS registrar is not supported. So what you want to do is you want to see what type of record it is and you want to copy this host name. So this is going to be a TXT record. We're going to go to your domain provider. We're going to click on add a new record. We're going to do a TXT record and we're going to paste that host name right here in the name. And then we're going to grab this value here, copy this, and we would go ahead and paste this in the value. And then you can just leave the TTL as half an hour or whatever it is. So the second record is also a TXT record. You can see the host name is just email and here's the value. So we want to copy this value. We want to add a TXT record. The host name is just email. We're going to paste in this value and there we go. We're going to add another record now. Now we're going to add a C name. It's just email.email. .email. It's a little bit confusing because the subdomain is email. So it adds that there twice. But let's say that you're, you are using just the first letter. It would be b.email or email.b. So we're going to grab this mailgun.org here. We're going to create a C name. The name is just email.email. .email. We're going to paste this value in here. And then we're going to go back and we're going to see the next one. So the next one is an MX record. So it's just going to be email. The priority is going to be 10. And it's going to be MXA. So we want to go ahead and add another record. We're going to choose MX record. It's just going to be email here. The priority is going to be 10. And we're going to paste that value in here. And then we can go ahead and add another value here. It's going to be 10 as well. And this next one's going to be MXB. So just mxb.mailgun.org. Paste that in there. So the last one here is just your DMARC record. So this is a TXT record and it's not necessarily required. So I don't think that the high level integration with your DNS registrar adds it automatically. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and add this as well. So we're going to add another one. It's going to be a TXT record. We're going to copy this underscore DMARC.email. We're going to paste that in the name. And then we're going to grab, grab this value and V equals DMARC P1. We're going to paste that in the value. And honestly, I can't explain to you what DMARC exactly is. I just know how to set it up. But if you ask ChatGPT to explain DMARC to you like you're a golden retriever, here's what it says. Imagine you have a special sticker on your letters that shows this letter is really from me. DMARC is that sticker for emails. It tells the computer that if this email doesn't have my special sticker, it may be fake. So be careful. This way, everyone knows which emails are real and friendly ones or which ones could be tricked from bad guys. So ChatGPT is talking to us like we're a, a golden retriever. So it makes it pretty simple to understand. This is that special. This is just a unique record that says, is this email actually from the person that it's saying it's from? And so I'm going to delete all of these other records because they're added automatically because GoDaddy is supported. But we're going to click on save here and then it's going to update. And if we go back and we see, we can verify these records to make sure they're good. You see, it takes us back to this page and it says SSL still pending. So you kind of have to play around with it. You might have to go back here and click on verify now again, and then we'll see if they're all green and verified now. So you can see it's not. Let's just click on verify again. And then eventually after you play around with it for a bit, all these records should be added automatically and you'll be good to go. And so I just refresh the page, click on verify again. Now we can see SSL is issued, so we're good to go. We can also click on here again, and you can just verify, and you can just make sure that all of these records have this little verified field. Once again, it's a little bit finicky, so we'll click on verify again, and we're good to go. Everything is in the green. So now, if you want to make this your default sending domain for all your new sub accounts or all your new clients, you just click on this checkbox right here. And anytime you create a new sub account and get a new client, this is going to be the domain that they're sending their emails from. And so the pros of using this method is that now we're not using the default messenger.net and we have our own sending domain so we don't have to worry about everyone else on high level spamming people and sharing their reputation. Also, it's a super easy one-time setup. You just add this once, you add it as the default, and now all your clients have this default sending domain. One of the cons for this method, though, is that now all of your clients are going to be sharing that same subdomain. And so let's say you have a bad client that adds 100,000 emails for people they don't know, they send out a bunch of emails and they get a bunch of stuff marked as spam. That's going to affect all your other sub accounts and all your other clients, their sending reputation. And so this is a great option to use if you're really the one in their sub accounts controlling all the emails you're sending out and they're not logging in, just spamming a bunch of emails out. And so if we go back to the SMTP service and we click on location settings, you can see a lot of these are just, they don't have any sending domain here because they're just using that default domain. So most of our clients are just using that default domain, the r.rvrs.com that we use. In terms of what types of businesses should use this software-wide sending domain method, I would recommend probably those lower ticket, go high level SaaS companies that don't want to have to do another step in the onboarding process every time they onboard somebody. And once again, the SaaS companies that don't necessarily have their clients logging in and sending out a bunch of emails. At the beginning of the video, I told you the number one reason why people in my community land in spam. And the reason is they don't have consistency between their from email and the sending domain. And so what I mean by that is if you go into a sub account 
and you click on settings, and then we go to email services, it's going to show us the dedicated sending domain for this sub account. So we can see in this sub account, it's r.reviewharvest.com. So what that means is when you go into a workflow and you're sending an email out or you're doing it in campaigns, when we go to create an email action, we need to make sure that this from email does not contain, you know, clay, you know, test.com. This test.com is not consistent with that r.reviewhours.com. And so when we send out emails for our clients that are using our default sending domain, r.reviewhours.com, you need to make sure that whatever's after the at symbol here is consistent with the actual sending domain of the sub account. And so when you send this email out, it could show up as spam depending on what the DMARC records are on their apple.com or whatever they're using after that at sign. And so you can see, here's just an example email that we're sending out for one of our clients. You can see it's Spencer, r.reviewharvest.com. And so we're using his name. The from name is from their business name, but the actual domain that it's sending from is r.reviewharvest.com. So we need to make sure whatever's after the at symbol here is r.reviewharvest.com and consistent with that sending domain. So 90% of the time I see people landing in spam in my community or if we're testing emails for our clients and they're landing in spam, 99% of the time that's the issue. So the third option is setting up a unique subdomain for every single client on your main domain. And so if you come into a client sub account, you go to settings, you go to email services right here. You can see now we can add a dedicated domain for this particular client. So let's click on dedicated domain. Let's click on add domain. And we can add, for example, the client's name as the subdomain. So joesplumbing.branchbid.com. And so now we can click on add and verify, and this is setting up a unique subdomain for this client. So what this is going to do is this is going to kind of silo each one of our clients. So if we have one client that's sending out a bunch of emails and they're getting lots of spam complaints, it's not necessarily going to affect Joe's plumbing as much because he has his own sending subdomain. And you can see it's the same exact process as before for setting up at the agency view. So if we click on continue, it's going to prompt me to connect GoDaddy or whatever your DNS registrar is. And if it's not supported, you can add those records manually. So let's click on authorized domain. It's going to take me to GoDaddy. It said, do you want lead connector to do this? We click on connect. And then it's going to automatically add all these records. Once again, though, it's not going to add the DMARC record automatically. So you want to copy this and you want to add another TXT record to your DNS settings. So we're going to do a TXT record. We're going to paste this underscore DMARC. We're going to copy this value. We're going to paste it here and we're going to save. And so the process of adding all of these records is the same as before. You just add the specific record to your DNS and then you just want to click on verify domain until it is propagated. It might take five to 10 minutes, but you can see I just tried to verify it. It said SSL is pending. Let's click on verify now and try it again. And boom, everything's good to go and in the green. So we can verify the domain and you can see it's a little finicky. So it said domain not verified. So we'll refresh this page and try it again. And so now it's all in the green. We'll verify the domain and you're good to go. So now this client has their own sending subdomain, which is going to silo them and protect them from your other clients messing stuff up. This option can work great for go high level SaaS companies that don't mind that one extra step on the onboarding. You can see that just took maybe five minutes or this could work great for maybe lower ticket marketing agencies that don't want to have to get access to their client's domain or the DNS registrar and add the records themselves or get them to do an onboarding call. Which leads us to the fourth way, which is setting up your client's domain as a sending domain. And so this is probably the hardest thing to do in terms of onboarding because you're going to have to either get them to add you to their your, their DNS so you can add the records themselves. You're going to have to do it on an onboarding call. They might, might, they might not have their login to there. They might forget it. And it's probably going to take 10 to 15 minutes on that call to get it set up properly. The easiest way to do this would just be them adding you to their DNS registrar. But the problem you might run into is that they might not want to do that. They might not want you to have access to your their domain and stuff like that. Or even if they do, they might have a two-factor authentication. So most time in my experience, it's just been easiest to do it on the onboarding call and just knock it out. But the pros of this is now they have consistency in their brand and all their emails are sending out. And this might be a great thing for a client that it's really, really important that these emails get delivered and seen. And if those emails play a major role in their marketing strategy. And now any other emails going out from your high level account are going to be completely isolated from this client that is using their own domain for their sending domain for their emails. So you can see in the example I showed you earlier, it could be like Spencer and then at pro1painters.com. And then this would be coming from pro1painters.com. So it'd be lots of consistency there. But once again, most of the time people are just looking at the email. They're not actually looking in here, see what it's sending and stuff like that. So once again, if you're a higher ticket marketing agency, this might make sense to take the time to set it up once so they have brand consistency across their emails. 
So that covers the technical side of the setup to make sure you're getting delivered. But there's also another side of it, which is actually what is the content that is in your email that makes sure it lands in the inbox. It doesn't go to spam or doesn't go to promotions and stuff like that. And a lot of that comes down to the actual words and links and photos and stuff that are in your email. And so the best thing to always do is just use mailmeteor.com, their little spam checker tool, where you can paste your email copy in here and see if they think it's showing up as spam or not. So you can see this is just an example they have. They have like guaranteed, financial, privately owned funds. These are all kind of shady words that they're saying. And so you can go ahead and paste your email copy in here and change it to make sure that like Gmail, Outlook, all those tools aren't detecting this as spam. A great rule of thumb here is just to keep it plain text. Don't include spammy words like free or dollar signs or guaranteed, stuff like that. And try not to include links unless it's absolutely necessary. Also, if you add a bunch of images to the email copy, there's a good chance that it's going to show up in their promotions folder. But over time, as you specifically send out emails to this list, the people that are opening your emails and engaging with your emails, you'll be able to get away with more, sending more photos, more links and stuff like that, and it not landing in spam. So lastly, I was going to tell you what I use to support my 200 active SaaS customers and also what I use personally for Review Harvest for our marketing from our sub account to make sure our emails get delivered. So what we do for our SaaS customers is we use r.reviewers.com, kind of the default software-wide sending domain. The main reason being is we don't have any clients logging in and uploading hundreds of thousands of emails and sending out a bunch of emails. We're normally the ones managing when the emails go out and who they're going out to. So we have lots of control over that. So we know that there's not going to be one bad apple in our clients that are going to ruin our reputation for all of our other clients. And when it comes to our sub account and high level that we do our marketing from, so like our review harvest sub account, we have a separate sending domain for this account so that we are making sure that we're siloed from even our clients to make sure that our marketing emails get delivered and seen. So in this case, we just use email.reviewharvest.com for all of our marketing and all of our promotions inside our internal sub account. And if you're interested in how I make $24,000 per month, helping local business owners just get Google reviews using high level, feel free to sign up with my link down below in the description. You'll get an extended 30-day trial and about $13,000 worth of bonuses just for signing up with my link. If you don't know how an affiliate program works, you pay the same price and I just get a cut of that. And then I give you a bunch of bonuses because I'm getting a commission off your sign up. So you'll get access to this community with almost 600 people using high level doing the same exact thing. And I'll hop on three coaching calls per week with you for as long as you're using high level to answer all the questions you have. If you want to see exactly how I make $24,000 per month just helping people get Google reviews, click on this next video here. Hope you enjoy.